It's 6.59. Wouldn't hurt to start a minute early, would it? Let's gather in tonight and get your song books. Number 109. I mean, glad God's faithful. Glad he's faithful when I'm not. Amen. But he's faithful. Number 109. Great is thy faithfulness. Here we go. Let's sing it out tonight to the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. not sitting up here, standing up here, and I'm looking over here, and my wife is the only one sitting in that whole section, and she looks so lonely and drear and down and discouraged. You're just fine? Okay. Well, anyway, I don't know why nobody wants to sit in her section, but, <laughs> but she's, you'd been a lot better off if I hadn't said nothing, wouldn't you? She don't like to be pointed out. Well, it's good to be at the house of God. We're going to hear some preaching, and then we're going to have a time of prayer and pray tonight, and seek the Lord and bombard the gates of heaven, the throne of grace tonight. That's good to be out. Brother Bill, would you pray, open our service in prayer, and let's ask God to meet with us tonight. Lord, thanks for the page to come and gather together. We gather in your name. We ask that you feed us tonight. Lord, fill us with your spirit and what you would have us to learn. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shake hands about 16 people.
us tonight. We love you in the Lord. We hope we can encourage you in the Lord tonight. And I bet you anything, Brother Kime's got a good message for us now. Trying to let some of these younger preachers preach a little bit on Wednesday night. We've got a lot to pray for, so we're going to keep things in mind. Number 91, Steps of a Good Man. Here we go. Though dark be the night and long be the day, Lord, make me follow in thy perfect way. Though come sorrow, though great be my pain, Lord, make me serve thee, come sunshine or rain. seven times this week already Amen. besides me <laughs> listen that's that's the bible if you look at that reference there in psalms 37 the steps of good man and the next verse says and though he fall the lord will uphold him and uh, he's fall seven times the lord uphold him i'm glad god god don't uh, leave us in the mud hole amen? amen i'm glad he's there to pick us up and take us on through Salvation is of the Lord. Amen. And sanctification is of the Lord. Amen. And glorification is of the Lord. I think I'll just preach on that a little while. Come on, Brother Kyle. You better get up here before I start preaching. Listen tonight, uh, be in prayer. The team is getting ready to roll out, uh, I think, uh, to South Dakota tomorrow to uh, do a survey and check out up there about the revival meeting. And man, I'll tell you what, let's just, let's, we got a lot to pray for. When you ask the Lord to enlarge your coast, you better get ready for the coast to be enlarged. Amen. Amen. Brother Michael, preach to us tonight. Well, it's good to be in church on a Wednesday night. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5. Who had a, a rough week thus far? Amen. A lot of folks, huh? You know something? The devil ain't happy with church, uh, people going to church on a Wednesday night. And you look across this country, churches are empty all over the nation on a Wednesday night. And a lot of times it'll start out, you miss Wednesday night, and then you miss Sunday night, then you're every other Sunday you make it, and next thing you know, you ain't even going to church. And so the devil will fight you tooth and nail, especially on these Wednesday nights, especially on prayer meeting, because prayer is so important. God hears prayer. And prayer, it, I tell you what, the more more I've seen God move, it's, uh, I realize the importance of prayer. And, and God answers prayer. Let's get into this tonight. And uh, pray for me as we're preaching. And uh, that God will use this and feed us tonight. I'm going to pray real quick. Lord God, I just thank you for your words, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we have an anchor, Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. Lord, you've been so good to us in so many ways to this church, Lord. I pray, Lord, you help us, Lord, to be faithful to you, Lord. And I'm thankful that you're faithful to us. I pray, Lord, you prepare our hearts to hear a message from you tonight, Lord, that you'd speak to your people, Lord, despite me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of the message tonight is, Who Are You Walking With? Who Are You Walking With? And here in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21, I'm going to have them put it up there, and we're going to go. 
we're going to go through, and if you can get there in your Bible, I, I hope that you turn your Bible open, bring your Bible, and, and read it in the Bible. But if you can't make it there, just smile like you got there, and you read it right up here. It's a nice deal. All right. So Genesis chapter 5, verse 21, we know Enoch, he's the first fellow here that is recorded that he walked with God. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah, and Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He walked with God so tight, he got raptured out early. And that's, that's a great picture there of the rapture, of God taking up his church. And I'm not going to get into all that tonight, but we had to go there because it was the, the mention here of walking with God. And that's something we ought to strive for in our lives is to walk with God. And you're walking with somebody tonight. You're walking right along with somebody this evening. Tomorrow you'll be walking with somebody. And I'm asking you tonight, are you walking with God? You know, there was the revivals in uh, the Isles of Lewis. And this really, it, it got a hold of me. That they were doing an interview on them. And they, got, they called for Duncan Campbell to come preach the revival out there. And when they did that, the first thing they, the fella asked him to come out before he came out and preached the, the revival, he said, are you walking with God, Mr. Campbell? And he said, well, I fear God. And that answer right there, there was a lot of wisdom in that. Fearing God and walking with God. And that really hit me. Enoch here, he walked with God. Just turn one, one chapter over there. Uh, Genesis 6 and verse 8. There's another fellow here who was recorded. He walked with God. And, and uh, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. You know why Noah walked with God? He, had, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And if you're going to walk with God tonight, if you're going to walk with God at any point of your life, you're going to need the grace of God in your life. And thank God he gives us grace to walk with him. You know something? I want to tell you this tonight, and I hope you get a hold of this. And I'm, I know this is nothing, this is no new revelation here tonight. This is just, I want this to encourage you to walk with God tonight. This isn't nothing new, nothing fancy out of the Bible. And, and we all know what walking is. It's one foot after the other. You walk and walk. It's not, we're not going to go to the Greek. Nothing complicated here. But walking with God, you need God's grace. And God wants to walk with you. You know, something I enjoy doing is walking with my wife. We go on walks, and it gives us just time to talk. And it's a little different than, I don't know, if we just sit down, it seems like uh, we get distracted pretty easy. I'll look around and see all the different chores and stuff I've got to do around the house. And, and, but if we just get out in the field and walk together, we get into some deep conversation. And it's one of the sweetest moments is walking with my wife. And God wants to walk with us. And he'll give us grace to walk with him. Let's look a little closer here at, at walking with God. Go to 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to turn with you. When we get there, we're going to go. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is how, grab a hold of this, this is how we're going to walk with God even though that we're in a flesh. We're in a wicked body of flesh, a vile body of flesh, but yet we want to walk with the holy God. And this is how God helps us do it right here. Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in all readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. We're Christ, and we're stuck in a, in a, in a wicked body of flesh. And the Bible says no good thing cometh out of your flesh. You're not going to suddenly beat your flesh into, into making it good. You're not going to. Your flesh is going to be vile, and it's going to turn around, it's going to be vile. The only hope that we have in this body of flesh is the new man inside of us. And that new man is more powerful than any of your flesh, the junk, the garbage. And if you're not careful, you're going to walk in that flesh. We don't want to walk in the flesh. 
You walk, I walk in that flesh and, and it'll tear things up and it'll make you miserable awfully quick. But God, he wants you to walk. After, and guess where it started? In the imagination. In your thoughts. God knows your thoughts. And if you set your thoughts, your affections on things above, you set your affection, your thoughts on God, you can walk with God and not in the flesh. So let me ask you, are you casting down imaginations? It's easy to read. What's the application there? What are your thoughts going? Because where your thoughts are, that's where your walk's going to go. You know, Ephesians 2.2, 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Ye walked. You had a walk before you were saved. You walked somewhere before you were saved. You walked according to the principalities of this air. You walked according to the wickedness, doing whatever your flesh wanted to do. But hey, after you have life inside of you, after you have the new man inside of you, you have a better walk. Let's not keep walking in the flesh. That brings destruction. We, and, and if you're going to walk with God, I'm gonna, you've got to get in this book. This book gives you life. This book, you know, the pastor is preaching about the locks. And it, boy, that, that was good for me. I needed that. But you get in this book, and that's how you get to, with God, and you get to talking with God, and you talk about walking as fellowship with God. And it's, it, there's nothing better than that. The devil wants to steal that from you. The devil wants to sidetrack you from walking. And, and here's the thing that this modern church gets off on, and, 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 uh, and it, it's right out of the pit of hell, is that God is going to follow you into that swine pit. Yeah. And they think that they're going to just walk. They're just going to walk straight into the swine pit and that God's going to be there with them. And they left God way back there. They left God when they stopped reading their Bible. They left God when their imaginations went all, all crazy into the world. And as they're in their sin and their wickedness, they want to pretend like they're walking with God and they're not. Amen. God wants to walk with you, but he's not going to follow you down in that swine pit and sit there in darkness and eat with you in the darkness. Okay. And I know this is a Wednesday night crowd. And I know you're here on a Wednesday, and I appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad. It's encouragement to me to see other It helped me to sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. This is what God gave me to preach. And I want to encourage you to walk with God, not in the darkness. Don't, don't fool yourself. If, if you're being lured out into the darkness, don't, don't lie to yourself and pretend like God's walking there with you. Go to Joshua 22. Joshua 22, and Israel's getting ready to receive a blessing here. And uh, he's, he's going to talk about their walk with them. We'll start in verse 1. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said unto them, verse 1, verse 2 here, unto them, ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you and have obeyed my voice and all that I've commanded you. They're obeying God. Did you catch that? Verse 3, ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren and has promised them. Therefore now return ye and get unto your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of Jordan. But take diligent heed to do the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Did you catch that following up to that? They, they obeyed God? You know, there's too many times to say, well, you know, we can throw away the rest of the Bible I've heard, but all we got to do is love God and love our neighbor. And if you love God, the Bible says you'll keep his commandments. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. Let's not, I'm not trying to fool around tonight. But I'm saying, if you love God, you want to walk with God, you're going to have to obey God. You're going to have, and this touches on the doctrine of separation from the world. If you're walking with God and you're not walking according to the course of the world, you're going to be separate. And in rocket science, God has a better way. And it's different than this world. It's different than the music. Your music will be different. Your dress will be different. Your talk will be different. Because you're communing with God. You're walking with God, and because you're spending time walking with God, keeping His commandments, and loving God, and we're not saying you've got you to step in line with the commandments of God, oh, and I better do this, and I better... It's out of a love for God you want to follow, you want to walk with God, because of the relationship you have with God. And then all those... I'm not, 
Uh, we're, we're not trying to say, okay, you got to do this, this, and this, and this, and this in order to, to be, it don't work that way. It's your love of God that God works those things out in your life. And you're just walking with him. You're just holding his hand. He's just, he's just guiding you along. He knows what's best for you. Let's go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings. A couple books over. Chapter 8. We're going to go verse 22. 1 Kings 8, 22. Walking with God is the, is the best thing. The devil will try to lie to you. But it's good. 1 Kings 8, uh, we'll start 22. And Solomon, Solomon's David's son, and he stands here. He stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. He's standing there and he's, getting, he's praying to God and said, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. That song we sung, great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. And the, every single covenant he's ever made, he will keep. Amen. God is faithful. He's not going to forsake you. He wants communion with you. He wants to walk with you. And he's not going to break any covenant, and he's a merciful God. Amen. If it wasn't for God's mercy, I'd be done tonight. Amen. None of us would be here if it wasn't for the mercy of God tonight. Verse 24, who hath kept with thy servant David, my father, and thou promised him, thou speakest also with thy mouth, and has fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, and thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. Are you taking heed to your way tonight? What, what direction are you going tonight? Are you walking closer to God or away from God? Because there's not an in-between. There's light and there's darkness. And you're either walking closer to God and your relationship is building with God or you're walking closer to the world. Now, I don't know where you're at tonight. I hope that you're holding God's hand and you're walking along and the days are sweet. But this world, this devil is after you. And as you're walking with God, there's a trail here that leads in the darkness. And there's a trail here that leads in the darkness. And they've got the neon signs and the flashiness. And, and, and your, your flesh says, hey, let's go try that road. And God's over here and you'll walk down that road. But you know when you're walking with somebody, somebody's got to be leading this deal. Well, I'm walking with my wife. Somebody's setting the pace. Somebody's saying how fast we go. Somebody's saying we're going to turn this way or turn back that way. Somebody is setting the pace. And if you're walking with God, then you're following after him. So don't fool yourself. If you're, if, if you're starting to walk the way of the world, take heed to this warning. Take heed of your ways. If you're walking with God, uh, 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 when you walk with God, it, it's hard to walk with God and, and listen to country music. That music get in your head. It'll throw your walk off. It's hard to walk with God when you're showing nakedness. It's hard to walk with God when you're not reading your Bible. It's hard to be walking with God if you're not praying. Now, I don't know where, where you're at tonight. I don't. But I need to walk closer to God. And when you walk with God, you get that peace back. You get the joy you get humbleness in your mind because you're walking next to a great big God. You've got the protection of God when you're walking next to him. I walk next to one of my sons. He ain't worried about a whole lot because dad's with him. I walk next to God and I, I stop worrying about so much because God's with me. If you get a hold of this tonight, there's peace and there's comfort and walking with God. God wants to walk with you. He wants that fellowship with you. Are you walking with God tonight? What's getting in the way of your walk? Money? Is it friends? You know, some, of the, some friends aren't going to want to walk with God. If you walk with God, they're going to say, I'm out. Walk with God is better than any friendship of this world. Let me, we're going to finish up here real quick. First Kings, we're still in Kings. Go to chapter 15. You know, this old Jeroboam here. Uh, he, he, uh, he got off from walking with God. And if you remember, 
he started worshiping other gods and building other gods and got other gods in his life like a, like a TV or a phone or his clothing or his friends. I, I don't know which gods he, he made, but he made of these other gods and he stopped walking with God. Then he sends his wife over and dresses her up real fancy to where the, the prophet wouldn't know that it was her. You guys remember this story? And, and then the prophet, God tells the prophet, hey, Jeroboam, sending his wife over here. And he says, oh, you're Jeroboam's wife. And, and he, they tell him he's gonna lo- God tells him he's going to lose the entire kingdom. Because God saw where he was walking. Verse, uh, uh, first Kings, we'll start in verse 1. Now in the 18th year, King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned, uh, reigned Abim, Jam, over Judah three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Malachi, the daughter of Absalom. Absalom. And he walked in the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with God as the heart of David his father. Now God's faithful, but, and he kept, he kept the, the, the promise that he made with David. But Jeroboam was done. He lost the kingdom. And if you notice here, he walked after the way of who? And he walked in the sins of his fathers. You know, your walk affects the people around you. Your walk is going to affect your children. Your walk is going to affect your grandchildren. Your walk is going to affect your co-workers, your friends, this church. If we get a lot of people in this church that want to walk according to the course of this world, do you think it's going to affect this church? If we got people in this church that are saying they're going to walk with God and do what they, they're going to, they're cleave unto God. That's what we read from the Bible, right? We need people in church that want to walk with God. Your walk will affect people. Your walk will affect your children. You know, Psalms 84, 11 says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield, A, a sun and shield. He's the light. I don't know, if it wasn't for God, I don't know what in the world I'd be doing. I don't wouldn't have the purpose of life at all. I would have no, I'd be just wandering out there. What are you going to do, make make some money for what? Are you going to raise children for what? Without God, without the sun and the shield, we have nothing in this life. But the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God wants to walk with you. Not so, not so you, oh, I've got to walk with God. Oh, it's horrible. He makes me wear these clothes and he makes me sing these hymns and he makes me go to church. (laughs) That isn't the relationship God wants with you. God wants you to cleave unto him and say, you know what? This world is a wreck. This world's full of darkness. This world's full of wickedness. And it blows my, if I get my eyes on the storm of this world and I get my eyes on the direction our country looks its heading, I, I lose my marbles. I'm bitter. I, I get, but if, if I look at God and I cleave unto him and I get to walking with him, hey, he's a shield. He's a shield for us. He'll protect you from this world. He'll protect, he'll give you sun. In the darkest hour, in the darkest place, wherever you're at in life, God will give you light. And this world needs light. You walk with God and people start looking. Why is he all excited? He ain't supposed to be all excited. Doesn't he know they're they're looking at trying to take away our Second Amendment? Doesn't he know the, the election's rigged? Then he know, and he'll go on the list of all these things. Hey, fuel prices are way up there. You got, we can go on and on about this world and how wicked it is, and it's wicked. Yeah. Or you can fix your eyes on the Savior and walk with him and cleave unto him. And you run into a problem. You say, Father, I don't know what I'm doing. What, what's, and, and God will guide you through the worst times. And he'll protect you, and he's the sun to you, and he's a shield to you. The children of Israel wandering out in the wilderness. And God took care of them. You know, Genesis 3, 8, it talks about, we won't have to turn there, it talks about how, remember the voice of God came walking? And wasn't that a great truth about the voice of God being Jesus Christ? And you know what Adam and Eve did? They hid themselves. And they hid themselves because of the sin. You guys know the song. And he walked with me and he talked with me and he tells me I am his own. That sweet fellowship is the best thing that you can have in this life. 
at fellowship with God, talking to God, taking your problems to God, saying, God, I don't know up from down, but I know you love me and I love you, God. We're on this thing together and I'm walking with you. But you let that sin get in your life. You get off trail in the darkness and the devil will steal that fellowship from you. And you'll be sitting in the darkness, but you're holding on to whatever is keeping you from God. I don't know if it's money. I don't know what it is. It ain't worth not walking with God. That's all I know. And I know when I get apart from I'm not walking with God, my life's in ruins. And I want to encourage you tonight on a Wednesday night, walk with God. God's good. Don't lie to yourself if you're not walking with God. Walk with God. That's all I got. Thank you, Brother Kyle and Brother Cook. And I want you, you guys come up. We're going to have prayer for these guys. They're leaving in the morning. And uh, so Brother Josh, if you'll come, and Brother Gabe, if they'll come. But uh, if you're online listening, uh, this is the, these guys are headed out in the morning to uh, South Dakota. And they're going to do a survey up there and check out the area and try to see if the Lord would have us to have a tent meeting up there. So we're going to have time to pray right now. So give you just a little bit of a break. Let's stand together as we're going to pray for these men. And you guys come right on in here together. We're going to kind of hook up here and we're going to pray. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what I heard about this guy right here on my left. That if he comes up to you and starts talking about the Lord, you go, you're going to pay attention. Amen. God's giving you a gift. And I want to encourage you, Brother Gabe. And I want, I want to thank you for being involved and Amen. being interested and so forth. Lord, tonight we come before you in this prayer meeting time. Yes, Father. And Lord, you said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall yes, be opened. You said that we have not because we ask not. Yes, Lord. And Lord, you said we have not because we ask amiss. And yes, consume God. Upon lust. And God, that's not what this is about. Yes, Lord. Lord, we're asking for your glory's sake that you would lead and guide yes, these men God. as they travel. Good First Lord. of all, Lord, I pray that you would give them safety. Yes, God. On the road, I pray that you watch over their wives and their children while they're gone. Yes, Lord. I pray, Help Lord, that God. you would show them and lead them, put them in touch with the people that you want to be yes, in touch God. with. God, open doors, make a way, God. Heavenly Father. I just ask you, God, to bless their time and show them what you want done or what you don't want done. I yes, pray, Lord, Lord, put your spirit in their hearts and their minds in such a way as to what should be done. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we are asking that you would open doors yes, for this Lord. tent to Good be set, Father. for the gospel to be preached, uh, for the communities to be uh, uh, evangelized. And, Lord, for, for your Lord, glory's Lord. sake, the salvation of souls. So we pray now, Lord, you bless these men as they travel. And, God, give them good success. And I want to thank you, Lord, yes, Lord. for their willingness, Lord, to sacrifice. Yes, and, God, God, give them the spirit of sacrifice. Yes, give God. them the, Lord, the joy of the Lord. Yes, and, God, I just want to say I thank you for just letting us be here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll just con you can be seated. Uh, so if you want to write down prayer requests tonight, we're going to keep moving and have prayer. But, again, thank you for listening online.